George is my Monstera. Jungle Velvet. Or is it Velvet Jungle? And Nanook, Marble Queen. Her first. Isn't she just lovely? Chartreuse. Magic! Yay! Thank you for subscribing. And please don't forget to like, because that's important too. Hello, I'm Shirley and welcome to Shirl's Divine Styling and today I wanted to do some styling so I thought rather than just talk about plants today I would actually style some part of my home. So um, I thought I'd do the fireplace because now that we're in the summertime uh, we're not using our fires are we so why not take advantage of this, take away some of our ornaments and put some of our favourite plants in. Um, and um, just make everything look nice. So I have done just that. Um, today I've got my lovely spider plant. I always call him a palm because I can't stand that word. Um, I have a wonderful, um, oh, what did she call me? <laughs> Marble Queen. I almost forgot her name. Marble Queen. Her first. Isn't she just lovely? I just love her. She's growing really well. Um, she's coming out now with a second vine and there's some other shoots coming up and she's got some lovely colour going on there. I just think she's lovely. So I put her in a gold pot and I thought we'd put her here. In my house I've got quite a bit of light from this side of the room. I've got the east window, the south window and the west window. So that particular area of the house gets a lot of light and it does get quite warm so to open the windows and stuff. But um, in any case, this is what I've done so far. I've got my peace lily here. She's quite beautiful. Um, I'll just bring her over and show you my darling. She's so nice. Isn't she lovely? Beautiful leaves, just lovely. And she doesn't need an awful lot of light, so she'll be here for a little while. I'm sure she'll be fine. And then this is my Warswessii, which um, is a very difficult word to pronounce. Oops. And um, she's lovely. She's known as the um, <clears throat> Jungle Velvet. Or is it Velvet Jungle? I can't remember which one it was now. But she is just beautiful. Can you see those leaves? I'll put some extra pictures up. And she has lovely purple undersides of the leaves. She's lovely. She's a calathea and a prayer plant. And she does lift her leaves in the evenings a little bit like that. She's really quite sweet. Not an awful lot like the others, but she does lift them a little bit. But the colouring on this plant is just lovely. They don't call her velvet for nothing. Those leaves, they are just so beautiful. Um, when I first saw her, you know, I was looking at her, I was thinking, gosh, she looks so velvety. But when you actually feel that she really is, and she's non-toxic, so you can enjoy holding her and do, you know, various things with the leaves, not to have to worry. Um, so she's really beautiful. Her stems are that lovely purpley colour as well. And she doesn't like um, overwhelming light. You know, like the cal calatheas don't do that because they like to retain the water. So there she is. She needs to be kept moist. Um, the only little problem I have is that she shouldn't really have too much in the way of salts and the water. So. That is a little problem I'm looking into. Um, I mean, she could be fine with your own tap water. And if you live in a city, I don't, you see, I live in the countryside. And the water is quite hard here. So um, I would have to probably do a few things. I mean, I've been leaving the water out on the side, nice big glass of water out on the side counter. Uh, so that the next day it will be dechlorinated to a certain level because chlorine also can burn our plants, can't it? 
So when you've got sensitive plants like calatheas, I think it's not a bad idea to do something like that. Just big pint glass on the side, you won't think anything of it, and then the next day you've got it, you could just water them with that. So that's what I'm doing with her. Um, apparently they come from Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and they live in the forests, tropical forests, um, in the lower part of the tropical forests. And could you imagine a, a velvet carpet of these plants? I, I just, just can't imagine how beautiful that could be. So I'm very pleased with her. I've got her here right now. Um, and I thought, well, as she's a big plant, I'll put another big plant over here because I like my symmetry. And this is George. George is my monstera. And George, I can't lift him because he really is quite big. So I'm going to do a close-up for you. Um, George and I have a relationship. George is about 30 years old. And what happened was he grew really big. He grew big, he grew tall. And we went on an extended holiday and, um, you know, he wasn't quite looked after the way I wanted him to be. And he kind of deteriorated and there was one problem after another. And in the end, I thought, no, you've grown too big. You've obviously had some problems. I'm going to cut you down and, um, you know, try and re revive you and, and rejuvenate you. And, and, and I did. I managed it. And he only had a couple of leaves at that time that I wanted to keep. The rest, um, you know, I either took away and propagated or I did away with them. Um, but now, look at him now, thriving. And, um, you know, Monsteras, they, they could do with being repotted every couple of years. And he is due to be repotted. Um, they don't want to be put in the full sun. You know, if you want to grow them big, get them where there is lots and lots of light because they do want that light but they they cannot stand it on their leaves um it can turn their leaves yellow um and i had him a little close to the window the other day i've noticed one of his leaves is a bit yellow now so i'm a bit worrying about that but you know look, he's got plenty more and i can see he's growing so well and he's got another couple of small ones around the back here so and this one here and that. So he's doing really well. I'm really happy with him. And this is George. And um, when I had to cut him down, the whole family was really scared because we'd had him for so long. I mean, uh, you know, he, he came to this house. <laughs> um, apart from a rose, I think he was the only other plant that actually came to this house from our other house. So he's definitely the family member and we can't have anything happen to George. And then over here in my windowsill, I have a few other plants, some beautiful ones, some Caltheas, Dracaena, and a Trascantia, which I put in my other um, video the other day about Trascantias. This is Nanook, and Nanook is just so beautiful. Vining plant, absolutely lovely. Uh, and uh, this one was very small when I bought her, um, but she likes the sun, so you can let her be in the sun. But she has short roots, so, you know, you have to um, make sure that that soil is quite moist, you know. You make sure every other day, for sure, you a little bit of water or a really, really good misting. I, I mist her every morning anyway, while the weather's like this. It's such nice sunny days now and she's beautiful but even in the winter you know with the dry air from the fires and the radiators I, I missed it her so you have to miss your link um so i'm just going to put her over here for now because i think she looks quite nice on the windowsill trailing all that lovely beautiful vibrant purple and then there's my other plants as well doing quite well here now on the windowsill and I've styled them on my little table with a little bit of touch of gold. Um, and so that's the fireplace. Uh, I thought maybe I put a tray here with uh, some artificial sprigs. I did that for the spring before I put the plants around. Um, 
because you know it's spring isn't it springy five but you can just for a little example i'm not sure if this is going to go up there but that could actually look quite nice couldn't it i don't know if i can actually get it to go on i'll just show you anyway if it works hey there you go that's that's nice and we could do something else um I'm coming back and just getting something. Could go completely mad. And maybe put another plant here. You know, in the evenings, there's the candles. And you can just put the candle. I often put the candles on in the evenings. While we're in the summertime, why not take advantage um, of, of this lovely light, bright um, days that we're having? And I have my um, chartreuse uh, golden pothos. It's a different <coughs> golden pothos to the normal golden pothos, but she's beautiful. She's chartreuse colouring, and um, she's just gorgeous. Just look at that lovely, very palest of lime. And she's so shiny too. She's really quite shiny. She's lovely. I'm not sure what you can see. So I put her in a nice gold pot. I put her up here for now. I say for now because uh, I think that it is probably best to perhaps bring the changes. If you're going to move your plants around, then think about what you're doing and where you put them and you know what they can take in the way of light because that's really important. Um, but uh, you know, if you have a couple of weeks in one position then you could move them closer to the light or um possibly that and then and then put some other plants in that place and then you've got a whole new look again haven't you and doesn't it look nice i thought it looked lovely so with my lovely beautiful george because he's very precious to me i'll um say goodbye and um hope to see you again in another one of my videos and um here we have it. Magic. Hey. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining me and thank you very much for subscribing. Bye.